Yeah, so I can't cover the whole book as much as I'd like to. It is about oh, 500 plus pages. So there's some, you know, I'm not telling every every story in there. Um, it, it was it was a real interesting and just like in the last really big flood and I'm awful with remembering years of recent things for some reason the last really big one I remember a lot of people who worked in construction and such went from Arkansas down to Louisiana to help with work after the floods and they would everybody would say oh the insurance money's really good you know it was the same kind of thing a hundred years ago um, there were there were insurance claims in excess of thirty million dollars, and the uh, it, it was real real messed up the way that they handled the claims from the insurance in Louisiana, like they wouldn't let people wait till the water drained off so they could see the extent of the damage to their homes and their stuff and their property. Instead, they said, you have to make a claim right now and you can have a certain amount of money, but you cannot amend it later. But if you don't do it now, then you can't file a claim at all. And so they forced people into some strange um, bargains. It didn't matter if, uh, if uh, more damage was found later. They didn't care. And so people were starving and they needed the payments, they needed the money, and they needed food. And so they a lot of times took the deals but it was it was pretty it was pretty strange also around the same time as the flood is when Huey Long decides to run for governor of Louisiana Huey Long actually spent some time here in Jonesboro as well which you may know uh, he helped Hattie Carraway when she was running on her own for office and of course she became the first female senator elected in her own right in the United States now Hoover it's so it's so difficult to talk about anyone who was ever president briefly because they're all so complicated their personalities are so complex um, one thing about Hoover who, who was rather despised later by a lot of people but yeah okay let's leave that aside for a second the, 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 the water the flood did make him a hero he um, he saw the way people lived in the Delta he saw how poor they were he saw how dependent they were on cotton and then on soybeans and he felt like it was just an extension of the plantation system from back before the Civil War and in some ways he was right tenant farming tenant farming I mean it was a higher level of subsistence but it wasn't greatly higher and so he led all these efforts to raise funds because he thought it would be better to change the entire way of life in the Delta and he wanted banks to buy and in, um, into the idea of reconstruction and he wanted to offer grants of money to replace everybody's the poor people's clothes and things like that the estimate of all the clothes and furniture and all the household goods for one family in the Delta a hundred years ago was seventy seven dollars and forty two cents and Arkansas though Hoover settled the the settled at giving people twenty seven dollars and Arkansas interestingly is the only state we even know how it was settled because the other states didn't keep any records none <sighs> Hoover proclaimed his success. He kind of had a, a big ego reminding me of someone who's been president, recent, president recently. I, I just can't think who it could be. He, he didn't take criticism well. Hmm. And he was, he was something a hero, of a hero, but he didn't really create success for people. What he created was a way for them to take, to, um, to, to get credit so that they could borrow so that maybe they could change things. So it was more like that. Um, he, he thought he was probably more of a hero than some of the other people did, but at the same time, he won the nomination for president for the Republican Party on a single ballot. So he was, you know, nationwide, he was pretty popular. Uh, you know, I, I'm definitely skipping some politics just because I don't want to exhaust you guys. So some of the great changes that have happened since the 1927 flood 
first of all, we don't rely on a levies only policy anymore. At the federal level, um, the plan called the Jadwin plan was what focused the attention of Congress on the plight of the four people who lived in the Delta and not just alongside the river, but also along all the tributaries. So in Louisiana, Huey Long was elected governor and he, he was also very controversial. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. I'm just gonna pause for a second. Yeah, I don't even remember all that. Okay, in Greenville, sorry, in Greenville by March of 1928, the Red Cross was still feeding 12,000 people in Washington County, which is where Greenville is, and black citizens were leaving en masse. Where were they going? If you were here, I would probably get you to answer. North, they were going north. Uh, they were gathering every Saturday night. All the African-American families would gather at the railroad station to see who was leaving so they could tell them goodbye. The white planters were concerned about this because they were going to lose their labor force. So got to be worried about that. And... Hmm. Another legacy you could say of the flood, it's one of the first times where you see, other than in war, where you see the national government really step up and really take some major responsibility. So in a way, it sort of, um, it sort of foreshadows the greatly enhanced role that the national government ends up having once we get into the Great Depression, which is just a few short, you know, five short years from, from this great flood. So what do we do today? Um, today we do build higher and thicker levees, but we also have built reservoirs on several of the Mississippi tri tributaries, and we use other flood control features too. We don't only rely on levees, because we kind of learned that the hard way. Um, cutoffs in the 1930s and 40s were um, you know how I said the curve and you cut it off to make the river go faster? 150 mo or more miles was cut off the Mississippi in the 1930s and 40s. Did you know that? Isn't that weird? Um, mostly by eliminating sharp curves. And what else? What else? Keeping the river in its channel has become by far the most serious engineering problem that the U.S. Corps of Engineers faces. So the story ends as it began with man determined to assert his will over the river. And I hope you have a great break and I will see you soon. I'll email, I don't know exactly what we're doing on the Tuesday after break yet, but on the Thursday, hopefully we'll have some presentations. So I'll see you soon. Goodbye.